So let's look at capsule technology. Um, so we're saying, what are capsules? So capsules, these are oral solid dosage forms that are meant to, you know, they can, they are meant to carry uh, either medicines or just innate, you know, substances, which are enclosed in a shell or a container. So this container, we're just saying it's a, it's a shell, mostly which is made from a suitable type of uh, gelatin. Now, uh, just a little, a brief history. Uh, capsules were first patented for use in 1830 by Joseph and, uh, and Francois. But the only thing is that the first capsules that were patented for use were the soft uh, gelatin capsules or the capsules that were made from, uh, from soft gelatin. And then somewhere around 1846, um, a scientist named uh, Jules, you know, patented two piece hard capsules. So these are the capsules that I that are that are in use in the present day. So he's the one who invented um, the two the two piece or the two halves of the of the of the hard gelatin capsules. Now the only challenge is that these uh, these capsules they were made by hands okay so it means even feeding the drug inside them it was uh, it was by hand and so because they were made by hand the challenges came in when it came to fitting the two pieces such that in 1931 uh, Arthur invented a machine okay now which could overcome this challenge so he's the one who first invented a machine that could make these two pieces uh, fit uh, properly so these are the same so the machines that are used uh, currently for, um, for you know for manufacturing of capsules for filling of capsules and and, and all that it was coming it, it was based on the invention by by Arthur. Now, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages? So these ones, I'm not going to go into details. These ones should be able to understand on your own. So um, capsules are elegant. You know, they can mask the taste, uh, the bad taste, the unpleasant odor. You know, they, um, they offer stability to the drugs and also they are cost effective. You know, apart from that, they also have uh, disadvantages like um, the liquids. They're not suitable for liquids. For carriage of liquids which affect the gelatin, so or any other substance that affects the gelatin capsules, they are not suitable for that. And then sometimes also there are certain materials like uh, effervescent materials and deliquescent uh, materials. So effervescent materials, these are materials that tend to soften the hard gelatin capsules, so they might not, they are not actually preferable. And then deliquescent materials, these are materials that dry. Uh, the gelatin capsules such as they such that they become a uh, brittle so they're not supposed to be dry to brittle they're still supposed to contain a certain uh, moisture content this is what increases uh, their stability now let's look at some of the excipients or some of the reagents that are involved or that are used in the manufacturing of um, of the capsule shells so not the drug that is inside just the capsule shell that uh, that you see. So number one, uh, gelatin. Gelatin is the most um, is the most important excipient that is used in the manufacture of of capsules. So gelatin. We're saying an example of gelatin that that can be used is either type A or type B uh, of gelatin. So just in a little while, we'll get to see what type A and type B uh, gelatin. What this is and what it means. So either type either of them, you know, can be used. And then number two, uh, we're saying uh, plasticizers. Plasticizers are also part of the excipients that can be used. So examples of these are uh, glycerin, which should have specification as the, the United States Monphopia, or USP glycerin, and then also uh, glycerol, which should be between 85 and 98%. Uh, so what is the function of, um, of this glycerol? So glycerol... What, what's the function of glycerol or what's the function of plasticizers? So plasticizers, they are the ones that they impart softness, um, elasticity, and hardness. So they are the ones that control that. The third one is the use of preservatives. Why preservatives? Because these are protein nature, they're liable to um, microbial contamination, whether they're, especially the soft gelatin capsules. So 
we use preservatives. Examples of preservatives are uh, methylparaben and also ascorbic acid at about 0.2 percent. Why are we using them to retard the growth of microorganisms? And the fourth one is involves the use of uh, certain solvents. So certain solvents like um, like oils. Why would we use an oil in the manufacture of capsules? You know, just for elegance. Okay, and then. Um, the other one is the use of uh, opacifying agents. So, which uh, what's the best example of some opacifying agents that are used? Uh, that's a titanium dioxide, which is at a concentration of about 0.2 to 1.2 percent. What is the function of the opacifying agents? It's uh, to minimize the transparency of um, of gelatin. It's highly transparent, so we want to minimize the transparency, and then um. The other one is um is the color. So what types of colors are used? So this should be certified colors. This should be uh vegetable colors. This should be food and drug uh, approved uh, water soluble uh, dyes also. And then um what's the function of colors? So they just give you know a pleasant appearance to the shells. Okay, that's why you find sometimes your shell it has yellow and uh, maroon. You know something like that. So if you've seen, um, that should be amoxicillin, amoxicillin capsules before, then you know what we're talking about. And then flavors. So flavors can be added to the, you know, to the solution that is used to, to make um, the gelatin capsules. So what kind of flavors are, are used? So for example, ethylvanillin at a percent of 0.1 to 2%. Why is it added? It's just for good flavor. And then also sugars. Sugars can be added uh, to the formulation of capsules. Why are we, uh, what type of a sugar can, can be added? For example, sucrose. So it can be added up to 5%. Why are we adding sugar? Just for sweet taste. And then uh, acids. So um, acids can be added to the formulation of these, uh, these gelatin capsules. Why, what type of acids do we, can we add? For example, fumaric acid. Fumaric acid up to uh, 1%. Why are acids important? They lessen the, um, the aldehydic tanning of gelatin. So with time, gelatin has a tendency to tan, okay? So to prevent the tanning of gelatin, um, we add these um, these acids because then if it begins to turn then there's reduced uh, stability and then the the last ones um the last one is a uh, thickening thickening agents so why would we why would we add thickening agents to control the viscosity so that we can achieve a viscosity that is required of the gelatin uh solution and then an example of a thickening agent that can be used is a uh, methyl cellulose and then sometimes water may also be added. Which type of water do you use? You use distilled water or purified water or demineralized uh, water. So this one just acts as a, um, as a diluent and also just to provide um, moisturization. So that should be right about it. Okay, now let's talk about gelatin. What's gelatin? So I say gelatin, it's a protein. So it's a protein that is um, that is derived by the process of hydrolysis uh, from animal collagen. So we use animal collagen, it's hydrolyzed so that we can produce um, gelatin. Now, which part of the animals are used for us to to derive this uh, collagen so you can use the animal bones and also the skin of animals mostly this is the uh, pork skin these can be bones for let's say like cattle now um, we're saying gelatin this type A and type B 
like I said earlier on. Now, this classification is just based on um, the method of extraction, okay? So we're saying that um, gelatin which is uh, extracted by treatment of the precursor. So the precursor can either be uh, the bones or the skin. So by treatment of whichever precursor using, um, you know, in, using an acidic medium, okay, with an isoelectric, uh, with, as a, uh, with an isoelectric point at pH 9. So we are saying uh, type A, it usually just comes from the extraction of gelatin from the animal sources. Uh, mostly, this um, the acid treatment is done from the skin, the, um, the pork skin at the isoelectric point um, of pH 9. And then type B, this one is extracted using an alkaline medium, and mostly it's from it's from the bones of um, of animals. So from the bones, you use mostly alkaline treatment is used, and then from the um, skin of animals like the pork skin, mostly the acid treatment is um, the acid treatment is used. Now, what are some of, what are the properties of uh, of gelatin? So gelatin exhibits what we call bloom strength or gel uh, strength so the bone strength or the gel strength you know it just measures the the extent or the cohesiveness the cohesive strength of uh, gelatin molecules so the ability of gelatin you know to to be cohesive to to each other or to the various molecules of uh, of gelatin so can it be cohesive uh, yes so we're saying that uh, mostly the gel strength or the ability to form a gel for this um, for this gelatin molecule is directly proportional to the molecular weight of gelatin. So the greater the molecular weight of the gelatin, um, the greater its ability to form a gel. Yes. And then we're saying that um, if, uh, if the... Um, so for the normal functioning... If you for your gelatin to be physically stable, okay, or for your shells to be physically stable, so there's a range in which this gel strength should be. So, for example, the range is about 150 to 250 uh, grams. So the gel strength is me is measured in um in grams. So it's supposed to be in the range of 150 to 250 for your shells that are manufactured from this gelatin are uh, to be physically uh, stable. Uh, the second uh, property of gelatin is the viscosity of gelatin. So when gelatin is in solution, it has a tendency to, to exhibit a given viscosity. So viscosity is just the, the resistance to, to flow under uh, applied stress. And then we're saying that um, the, um, the most usable you know, gelatin should have a, a viscosity of about 25 to 45 millipoys. millipoys. Now, um, we're saying it's only at this viscosity that your gelatin will be able to form films, okay? Because you first need to form films before you make, um, when you're formulating the capsules. And then apart from that, uh, the third property is iron content. So gelatin, on its one, like raw gelatin, it contains iron. Okay, like just the normal iron, so it contains iron. And then sometimes the water, which is also used during manufacturing, it equally contains um, iron. Now, this iron has, um, it's highly reactive with, uh, especially the colors that are used um, during manufacturing. And then apart from that, iron can actually react with organic compounds in, um, in this uh, reaction, you know, which is going to reduce the stability. And so because of, those, because of that, uh, iron, the iron content should be less than um, 15 parts per, per mil. So this is what is required. It should not be more than this. Now, um, the next part is the manufacturing of empty gelatin capsule shells. How are they manufactured? So we're saying, first of all, uh, you're going to need the gelatin. Okay, and then gelatin is mixed together with uh, hot water. This hot water should be should not have any minerals um, in it. Okay, so I'm saying first of all, the gelatin is mixed with uh, hot water. This is done under a vacuum. Okay, because we want to eliminate the presence of uh, air or any bubbles. 
and then uh, so this is done in a stainless uh, steel uh, pot okay so I'll just be using uh, a pot so not your normal kitchen pots or like it's a jacketed pot so you mix gelatin with hot water under a vacuum so that you want to eliminate the presence of uh, air or bubbles because they can reduce the stability so this is done in stainless steel why steel to reduce just any reactions Ste like steel is more stable and then so it's uh so it's under this system that the gelatin so this which is also known as the gelatin uh gelatin melting system and then after this so now we have made um a solution now after making this solution from this pot um so we're saying that by gravity uh this solution is then fed to or it's then introduced to the feed tanks okay it's then introduced to the feed uh tanks so when it's uh when it's in these feed tanks so these are the ones that are going to so it's from the feed tanks that uh your gelatin solution is going to go to the dipping the spinning drying and all that so what happens is that after you make the solution the solution is transferred to uh, the feed tanks now it's in these feed tanks where um, the other excipients now can be added. For example, this is where addition of the dyes, um, the opacifiers, uh, you can add your water also. So you add the necessary excipients, you know, to complete um, to complete the gelatin preparation. And then after this, it is then fed to um, the deeper section, which is the dipping. So a solution will then be fed to uh, the deeper section by gravity so that now you can start manufacturing um your your shells so you're going to have let's say uh this part then you also have um this part so you have a body and then you have uh, a cup so the body is larger and then the cup is the smaller part of the of the capsule And then we're saying that now, um, what are the steps of um, of, ge of the gelatin preparation or preparation of the empty shells of the of the capsules? So the first one is dipping. So where are we now? So after we made the solution, the solution and then it was taken to the feed tanks. Then from the feed tanks, we added the necessary excipients, and then from there, uh, now this is where we are. So first of all, there's um, there's dipping, there's spinning, and then there's drying, and then there's stripping, and then there's trimming, and then there's joining. So first of all, uh, what happens in the in the dipping? So you're saying that uh, pairs of stainless steel pins. So so you're still using the uh, steel. So pairs of uh, stainless uh, stainless steel pins they are dipped into the dipping solution so remember we have uh, we have the dipping solution so you're going to have pairs of uh, pairs of these pairs of uh, stainless uh, stainless steel uh, pins so these pins they have a structure for mm -hmm. so you're going to have a pin so let's say your pin has both so it's going to represent both uh, the body and the um, in the cup okay in these they fit perfectly so so this is let's say so this is the stainless pin for for the body and then this for the cup so these are dipped into into the solution okay both are dipped into the solution and then after that now uh, they are removed from the solution so what will happen is uh, your gelatin is going to you know, it's going to be absorbed to the surface of this steel. It's going to be absorbed to the surface of this steel. And then as it dries from this surface, okay, so this, it can be stripped from there. It can be stripped or it can be removed from this, uh, from this pin or from this metal where it's adhering. Such that at the end, because it's in solution and then it dries, then you can end up now having your, um, your cup and, uh, and your body separately so that's the whole principle behind so first of all we are saying that um uh, pairs 
why are we saying pairs so it has to be uh one pin representing the body then another pin uh representing the cup so these pairs are dipped into the um, solution of um of gelatin you know to form both the cups and uh and the body so like here both to form the cups and uh, the body so this is only done for 12 seconds so they're only going to be dipped for 12 seconds and then they move on to the to the next stage so the solution mostly it's kept about at um in a hot uh, in a hot jacketed pot at about 50 degrees and then the pins they are maintained at uh, mostly they'll be at 22 degrees and then um, we're saying that the next step is therefore spinning so after these pins now have been dipped so they are coated or they have uh, the gelatin solution now absorbed on their surface so what happens now is uh, spinning so the pins are rotated at about, the pins are rotated at about two and a half at about two and a half times okay why so the spinning is just like uh, rotating them why are they why are they rotated okay after they have been weighted with um, the solution now they are spinned why are we spinning them for even distribution of the um, of the gelatin okay so if you've seen people who use uh soil let's say to to make pots or vessels or, or whatever they are making so mostly they it spins okay so that spinning is important because it uh, it ensures even distribution of uh, of the soil okay as they are molding so this is the same principle here so for even distribution uh, of the gelatin okay around the, um, the body or the cup and then after after that now uh, and also the other reason for um, for spinning is to reduce the formation you know of beads or any extensions so for example if um Let's imagine if you were to get honey, okay, if you were to dip, um, if you were to dip something in honey, or if you were to dip, let's say, actually, I'm a very good example here. So, let's imagine this is the cup and uh, this is uh, this is the body. So, what will happen is uh, these two are going to be, so they are moving in pairs. So, these two are going to be dipped. So it's if these were pins, okay. So these two are going to be dipped in the solution in this one. So you have the bigger one being the the body and the smaller one being uh the cup. So these pins first they are dipped in solution and then after that they are they are rotated. Why are they being rotated? Because we want to make sure there's even distribution of the gelatin on both of on both of them. And then if they're not rotated, you know, when you lift it like this, it's going to have a tendency. You know to form like uh, a bead or uh, extensive uh, structures so that's why they are they are rotated for even distribution and also to prevent the formation of uh, any other like an uniform structure for example like maybe some sort of a bead at the at the end and then after that they are dried so the third stage is drying now after they've been spinned and now there's even distribution of the gelatin so they are dried how are they dried so there's just like um a blast of cool air okay is um a blast of cool air is passed on or is passed through the um, the these pins okay or we can say that the pins now they are passed through uh, a blast of cool air why uh to form the hard shells because it's still soft here so here cool air it forms uh, the hard shells now there's something about this air so this air has um, a specific and controlled volume temperature and humidity why is this important this is important because um, you you need the correct uh, type of air uh, so that it can remove the exact amount of moisture from the two halves okay so why are we drying? Because we want to remove uh, excess uh, moisture. Why isn't excess moisture good? If there's excessive moisture, then they're not going to be hard gelatin capsules. And if there's excessive moisture, they're not going to be stable because they're protein in nature, so they're going to they're going to degrade. So that's why they are that's why they are dried. And then after that, now they've uh, they've dried. So let's imagine these again were were your carriers. So these were your carriers. 
So what will happen is uh, now they have to be stripped. So they have to be. So they are still holding on to. They're still holding on to the pins. Now they have to be stripped or to be removed from. Uh, they have to be removed from, from these uh, pins so that now they are just individual shells because they have dried. So what happens now? Um, the pins go to the stripping uh, stage. So to strip, it is just like to to remove or to strip off um, the pins of. Um, of the shells so here um a pair of bronze uh, of bronze gels okay so they are the ones that uh, that strip the pins from um that uh so they're the ones that are going to strip the cup and the body from these uh from these pins so it's an automated uh process that's going on from one stage to another and then after that there's um the streaming what is streaming it's usually just what it means to trim or to cut okay so to cut to to the desired uh, size so trimming is done by stationary uh, knives okay so these are knives that are designed to trim these um to trim the the shells that have been stripped off from from the pins because now they are dry so what will happen is this, they're going to be passed through the stationary knives where they are trimmed okay the two halves are trimmed to the required uh, length so mostly the tolerance of trimming is about 0 0.15 uh, millimeters okay so the whole point of or the whole point of trimming is so that you have the required size uh, of your of your capsules as we are going to see sometimes you don't you want a specific size of, uh, of capsules and then after that there's joining okay so in joining, this is where you just have now the cup and the body uh, joined. So let's say uh, the cup is always bigger than uh, the body. So let's say this was uh, this the the body is always bigger than the cup. So if this was the body, this was the cup. So you expect them to join. So they're going to be joined like this to form a capsule. So this is these are just two empty shells. When you want to fill them in, they would have to be uh, separated by machines again. Then afterwards, they are sealed. Okay. But in the meantime, if you're they're going to be transported or maybe from one place to another, you can't put them separate like this. So they need to be joined, even when they're just empty shells before any drug is put in them. Okay. So after that, we're saying um, the body and the cup are joined. And then um, after they've been joined now, they undergo what we call uh, polishing. Okay, so this is where it's like an oil can be used just to polish them up so that they are, they are elegant uh, in nature. So they have a pleasant uh, appearance. They're shiny, they're attractive, they're aesthetic, they're aesthetically pleasing and all that. And then we're saying when these capsules now... Um, are finished or done so i saying finished capsules or uh, capsules now that have that have passed through all the processes and they um they've been polished and they are elegant so these are carried on a conveyor belt okay to a container where they're going to be stored so no one comes to carry them so a, a machine again it's automated they'll be carried on a conveyor belt to um the packaging container now uh we're saying um the quality control you know of uh the quality control of um of these shells you know it continues during the manufacturing process okay so what are we doing so you're checking for the size is the size uniform from one uh cups from one capsule shell to another is the moisture content okay from one moisture uh from one from one uh, from one shell to to another because again if the moisture content is too low they're going to be brittle so they can break okay if the moisture content is too high they're going to be degradable okay because they're protein in nature then you're also checking for the thickness is the thickness okay is it right you're also checking for the color is the color uniform is there any uh, is there any color variation and then after that uh, at at designated points so these capsules undergo a uh, visual inspection. So it's where you just uh, visually inspect them. What you're seeing, is it okay? And then uh, after that, then you can, they, can be imprint, they can be printed with whatever logo, you know, as, um, as per manufacturer's guidelines. Now, 
what so the final thing we look at is the capsule size what are the sizes of capsules are all capsules the same no so capsules that are meant or capsules that are intended for human use they have a size that ranges from triple zero so zero 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 to five okay so that means you're going to have zero 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 then double zero so your sizes are going to range like this so you have zero 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 okay and then you're going to have zero zero then zero then you're going to have one two three four five so these are the sizes of the size range of uh, of capsules so zero is the triple zero is the largest while five is the smallest so as you go down as the numbers increase the size decreases okay so for example this would be a triple zero uh shell capsule and then this would be a number five uh shell um capsule so we're saying um from triple zero to five so this is how they decrease okay so the one which is the largest to have the is going to have the highest volume it will have the greater height and also the diameter so five is going to have the smallest uh, volume capacity the smallest uh, height and also um the the smallest diameter and then um capsules mostly you know the hard gelatin so this is hard gelatin uh capsules so the hard gelatin shell capsules mostly they are meant or they are designed to encapsulate so if we're saying ranging from the largest to the smallest so they can encapsulate about 65 milligrams to one gram uh of the drug or of the active ingredient or of the innate substance but they can encapsulate uh, a substance of a, of um, between 65 to 1 gram in quantity so this is why that should bring us to the end of uh, the first uh, lecture so this would be the size of like zero triple zero would be the largest followed by a zero zero then followed by uh, a zero up to a uh, five which is going to give you uh, the smallest parts both the body and uh, and the cup so for today is where we're going to end and then um so in the next one is just looking at the the types of the types of uh, capsules which is the soft gelatin and the hard gelatin and then when it comes to the evaluation of capsules so it's almost the same or it's similar to that of uh to that of tablet so we're not going to go it we're not going to go through it um over and over okay